Um, hi, good morning everyone uh, and welcome to today's program, uh, Ilhan Conversation with Sharifa Nadira and special guest Lisa Koyo. Uh, Sharifa today will be uh, introducing her book, Recall It Forgotten Taste, which celebrates indigenous plants, indigenous generational knowledge and food diversity. The book features Sharifa's illustrations of foraged indigenous plants, which are included in the Ilham Gallery's current exhibition, Tite Gairis Uh Sharifa will later be joined by special guest Lisa Goyo, uh, who will be demonstrating the preparation of a local Tenwan dish, Umi Kachau. Sharifa, over to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us today, sparing your Precious Saturday, <laughs> just to be here. Um, so without further ado, we'll start. Uh, first of all, I would like to first and foremost thank uh, Ilham Gallery for initiating the idea to do it here instead. Uh, we are now in the newly opened forest learning sector. It's uh, managed by Forest House, uh, where I currently serve as a curator for the space. Uh, also the creative director for the conservation team. <coughs> so a little brief about what this space is all about. Uh, it's actually a community space uh, to gather uh, groups and individuals uh, with a common goal uh, con con conservation field. Uh, at the moment, we're focusing on forest and wildlife conservation as well as traditional and ecological knowledge. So our main activities include uh, guided walks, uh, such as the one that some of you may have joined earlier on in the morning. And then we have seasonal themed exhibitions, but uh, concentrated on conservation efforts. And also uh, sharing sessions, such as this one. <coughs> um, we recently uh, hosted uh, a series of pilot uh, guided walks for Kujalan and Chalkit and also Chipaka School uh, in collaboration with UPSI, uh, University of Politica and Sultan Idris and also further on with Mosaic, uh, Museum of Science, Arts and Innovation for Children. Yeah. So uh, for the first time ever, we hosted the first uh, public walk uh, early in the morning and hope those who have joined uh, feeling refreshed for our next session. Okay, uh, so for today, um, as mentioned by Shaza, uh, the sharing session is hosted under a series of uh, in-house in -house conversations. Um, for today, I'll be speaking more about my work as an artist, uh, the work that I do as an artist, and also the process of making the book. Yeah. So my name is Sharifa Nadira. Um, I'm an artist working on uh, different tangents of art and ecological knowledge. I was raised very, with a very strong paternal presence. My grandmother and her mother raised seven children on their own, and the kitchen is the heart of the household. So this, of course, has transcended to my mother, who sees um, cooking as an integral part of life, in her day-to-day -day life. So my sister and I would always be the most curious ones to, to jot down and uh, gather recipes, ingredients from her. And because of this, I've always uh, wondered about the sources of this generational knowledge and the sources of the food that we eat. So having limited knowledge on edible plants, I was driven to know wanting to know more and learn more about what we don't know, what we, like myself, who is part of a larger community who 
have come to not appreciate the wealth of the forest and the sources of the food that we eat. Um, so I, I was driven to be more uh, about that. And having interest in art and botany led me to attend a residency in Ribundahan where I uh, was exploring and it, actually it was a good entry point for me to learn about hemp plants from Angela Hitch's uh, garden, her home in the garden, and just to learn more from her. And these were explorations of different mediums capturing uh, different edible plants and also mm -hmm. non-edible plants. So, and of course, uh, I've also acquaint, been acquainted with uh, Dr. Rusasina Idrus, uh, who is an anthropologist from the University of Malaya. She, she has been working with the Orang Hasi communities um, extensively and over the last few decades. So, one of the first few trips, we, we went to a Christmas gathering at uh, Orang Hasi village in Labu where the women of the community um, taught me a little bit about their plant knowledge uh, from their own garden. Yeah. So through these experiences, um, I came to understand how innate the relationship that the Oromasti community have with the forest, with the natural environment, and with plants. So the forest is an all-in-one supermarket for the raspi. One look at the plant and they know what it is for immediately. It's a kind of a knowledge passed down through generations. Uh, to the orang asli, the food food relates back to the land and. Uh, unfortunately, land is often an object of dispute for rulers and decision makers. But in contrast to the Orasli, um, they believe that the land does not belong to us, instead we belong to the land. So understanding this uh, includes a process of gathering and remembering ingredients from the forest to amplify voices and stories that have erased or at the brink of uh, being lost. To me, this body of knowledge can no longer be excluded in important discussions. It is a race against time, a race against uh, destruction and also erasure of memories. So these are portraits of the four main people that uh, carved the way for me to understand um, plants and the indigenous culinary practices. This one is uh, Sheikh Raman Bhaktivin from Kampung Batik Bulas Bumba, uh, Sheikh Samsung Senin from Kampung Bisut Baru, Kuala Langat, uh, Shah Kumada, uh, Loko, Shah Aynisah Kumada and also Lisa, who will be doing a special demonstration of a Temuan dish in the world. So each of, each of them may come from different communities telling different but similar stories of the land. Um, and when one listens, you, you start to notice a recurring theme of land encroachment and displacement, resulting in a decline uh, to the connection towards the land and who in their eyes the land is the provider so it has come to uh, a point where some of them are unable to practice their spiritual beliefs because of this so the book recalling forgotten tastes uh, was born out of this piercing need to document the unwritten knowledge of tending to the land and of course with permissions from members of the community uh, to listen to their stories and <coughs> stories of 
the, the land and the food in an increasingly volatile environment. Uh, and of course, through conversations with them, it is an undoubted fact that they have been the guardians of the forest and the land since, since time immemorial. So much of the process of gathering this knowledge, the only way to capture all the, the transmission of knowledge is through multitasking, through hiking in the forest, following recording their audio and video um, of the transmission of ecological knowledge while also sketching the plants. And of course, getting lost in the jungle. For me, uh, understanding their relationship with the forest uh, opens spaces to learning different types, different types of knowledge, um, which are often overlooked. And to me, this kind of knowledge uh, contributes to healing our relationship with food and to the land. So one of the first few trips that I went to, was organized by Dr. Ku Gei Cheng uh, of UST of uh, Nottingham. It was called Food Foraging and Forest Study Tour. Uh, this was particularly special as everyone had a role to play in gathering and preparing the food. So as you can see, rice is cooked in bamboo and placed over fire. The rice is fragrant when one revel and uh, eaten with sorry, next one. eaten with bamboo shoots, jantung uh, pisang, and also kuchuli. As uh, this was uh, in Negeri Sembilan, the kampung uh, Tohul. So as you can see, the dish at the end. Uh, has all the traditional dishes like the nasi dalam gulo, which would be jantung pisang, but then it has some balf. So, as the local people from um, the Greece Milan is known for their love for chili, so probably owing to their minang accessory, so the one we have also adapted to eating spicy food as well. Hence the presence of for a while, I also sought guidance from Michi Raman from uh, Kampung Batulunas Boba, who generously taught me the wealth of a forest. <laughs> Many of the plants we encountered while hiking in the forest include a specific type of um, fern called Paku Uban. And also uh, the next one is Puchuk Manis. In some traditions, the leaf, this leaf is consumed to induce breast milk for breastfeeding mothers. And a lot of other plants we came across were also not edible but serve a different purpose. For example, uh, for example, Daun Malam, uh, according to Shaks Madu, uh, it's used as an herb for confinement. Daun Lere and Bumban used for food wrapping. Setawa, uh, which is often found along streams or rivers, it contains Healing water to cure panas um, badan, body heat. Yeah. And jerangau, um, jerangau are is a type of grass. The, the leaves are used as uh, a traveler's companion to ward off uh, bear or Yeah. <coughs> In Malaysia and many parts of the world, uh, customary or ancestral lands are often threatened by deforestation and overdevelopment. 
shackling indigenous people who are at the forefront of this uh, into recruitment schemes and uh, in relocation. This has happened not once, but multiple times across the history uh, to uprooted communities like the Temuan in Kuala Lumpur, which was the, this, some of them were displaced from their original home where Kuala Lumpur is now. Through this, the process of remembering can be a journey of healing, but to others it only inflicts pain. So treading carefully along these lines, I had to make sure and try my best to interrogate uh, with respect to their principles, worldviews, and traditions. And like many forests, um, the Kuala Lumpur uh, North Forest Reserve is their home, their source of food, and their resting place. Sorry, before that, uh, just to introduce. So, Samsu Sidney was uh, is an indigenous to mine from Kampung Sebaru. He brought us into the forest to learn more about the different trees and species, uh, animal species that are still very much abundant in that very small forest that we have now in the middle of planting. Back in 2020, there were constant threats for degazettment by the Islamic, the Islamic government. And the constant threats were looming endlessly with the promise to shift the forest river elsewhere. It was a treacherous time for the community, not knowing their fates, uh, as they heavily rely on the, the forest for their livelihood and what more during the pandemic. Elsewhere, there were encroachments, uh, already encroachments in deep forests and uh, different Marasi villages across the country. Finally, with uh, immense pressure from the public and uh, a campaign uh, held by Shakri himself and a group of friends to fight against this that way, uh, the, the, the government finally heard them and decided to regazette the forest. Uh, so yeah, so some of the plants that we found in the forest uh, were the versatile bertam. It's an all-around species where you can use every part of the you can eat the fruits, uh, use the leaves as uh, a weaving material, and also the, the stems as ungun um, api. And also, yeah, like I mentioned before, is the daun malam. It can, it can be found quite abundantly um, growing in the forest. It's a traditional mess medicine for the Tumwai to use uh, for the woman who is uh, undergoing confinement where they put the leaves on their stomach. So for the Oransi community, the hassle and joy of cooking dishes such as this one is reserved for important occasions like Hai Miam, which is Ancestors Day. However, uh, Lisa, Shah's sister, still generously uh, shared with us her Tumhoi culinary practices and cooking using forage plants from the forest and the, the ingredients we found. To most of us, food is generally an abstract idea. To them, uh, knowing the source of food and gathering food is deeply rooted in their way of life. And it's interesting to see, and it's much more common to see both genders uh, participating in gathering, preparing the food within indigenous communities. So, 
So this is uh, an example of a complete dish uh, served during Hari Unia. Uh, we have ubi rubos, sayur merati. Sayur merati is this one. Later, after the session, please feel free to uh, touch, smell, and even taste some of the plants. And uh, we have the pak kladi, where they use a uh, type of kladi to make uh, to make a dish. And we have the ayam masala gulo and also ubi kacau. Ubi kacau will be um, demonstrated uh, afterwards by Nista. So yeah, beyond the book, the work continues. I um, am looking at different uh, indigenous food foodways across uh, different communities in Malaysia, uh, across the peninsula. So some of the things that I would like to share here are part of uh, our excursions into Kampung Kedurung, Poslan Jampahang where they are mostly still paddy hill rice farmers and this is this is a type of rice that they planted from their heirloom seeds yeah. and also wapra uh, where they use mostly for uh, baits for rats in the forest in their uh, kebun and also, sorry because the TV doesn't capture the last photo. It, that is Boa Simpo. So, Boa Simpo, they usually use the liquid found in the fruit as shampoo. Yeah. So, uh, and it also has an edible fruit inside. And then, uh, of course, I had to document the food. Um, cooked by the uh, sea communities. So this is by so Kampung Kendurung Post Nanjang Pahang. They are of the Semai community. Um, they're quite uh, there's quite a significant difference between um, their knowledge and also their language. <coughs> so this is uh, rebung bamboo shoes where they used to uh, cook with uh, rice in bed. And also, here is um, a, a set of dishes cooked by Lisa and family uh, as part of Hari Unia. So, common ingredients you would see are cassava, uh, <coughs> daun sumomo as ingredient, and daun sumomo is a kind of leaf that is used to replace um, bawang. So it, it, it gives a different flavor. It looks like this one. It's a kind of, it's a plant in the ginger family. Yeah. So I will sort of wrap this up with a few reflections, uh, which I found that their relationship, the Sikh community's relationship with food and the forest is always centered on mindfulness and humility. And to them, food requires care, and the act of cooking and preparing food can be a practice of remembrance in itself, even though um, sometimes situations and conditions do not permit. Yes. So the, I would always end a uh, session with a list of uh, organizations that you can follow and keep in touch with them to know more about their current work and advocacy work. Like for example, uh, in Shark's Kampung, Shark and Lisa's Kampung, they recently set up Pertubuhan uh, Sahabat Gambut Rasli Temuai where they collectively gather uh, under Balai Informasi Budaya Temuai where they host 
different uh, community, different groups of people to learn more about their culture, their food, and their way of life. Kebun Mandiri OA is uh, an ongoing um, work by a community, uh, working with different communities across uh, Malaysia, Peninsula Malaysia, to practice Roma culture uh, and also to aid food supply. It actually started in during the pandemic. So now it's still ongoing uh, and it has grown to different villages as well. And of course the rest include Gerai OA, Primis and COAC who continuously, to, continuously work together to, to advocate for RASI rights. Yeah. And with <coughs> that, I end the session. And we will move on to Kalisa and her session of preparing uh, ubi kacang. So, if you guys would like to um, see the process, one by one.